Thank you for joining me for this webinar presentation of the 557, Techmar's newest thermostat that was launched in August of this year. My name is Elizabeth Brown. I am a technical support specialist at Techmar Controls, and I will be your host for today's webinar. The 557 introduces Techmar's thermostat solution for radiant heating and cooling with heat pumps. It is the only thermostat on the market designed to operate a one or a two-stage water-to-air or air-to-air -air heat pump together with a radiant floor. Also, depending on your application, we can support up to four stages of heating, two stages of cooling with fan control and with humidity control. I am very pleased to introduce you to the 557, a thermostat that positions Tecmar as the singular control choice for a variety of applications. Of course, one of the most celebrated functions of the 557, and there are many, is its ability to measure and control humidity, a capability that truly integrates air and hydronic systems for a cohesive overall system approach. We'll begin this webinar by exploring those applications and others to highlight the versatility of the 557 thermostat. We'll also introduce you to the functions of the 557 that make it so unique. The function selection that we offer in the 557 is what allows you to customize the thermostat for your particular application. Lastly, we'll cover some basic wiring connections, since the wiring also speaks to the versatility, the flexibility, and the simplicity of the 557 thermostat. These are the primary heat pump applications for the 557. The first applications in the upper left hand corner shows an air to air heat pump that is providing forced air heating and cooling to the building. We also have the option shown of adding a radiant floor to this system. If we do that then the radiant would be our first stage of heat. Our heat pump could provide a second and a third stage of heat if it's a two stage heat pump. And we also have the option of a fourth stage of heat by enabling a backup electric strip through the W2 relay connection. In cooling mode, we can provide up to two stages of cooling if we have a two-stage heat pump. So this system is four-stage heat and two-stage cool heat pump application. Our second heat pump application shows a building loop. So this is a closed water building loop where individual units in the building are equipped with water-to-air heat pumps. We've also shown the option of adding the radiant flooring to this system. If we do, our radiant is first stage heat. Our heat pump can provide a second and a third stage of heat, and again we can provide a fourth stage of heat with the electric strip backup. In cooling mode, our heat pump could provide up to two stages of cooling. So this is again a four stage heat, two stage cool heat pump application. Our last heat pump application shows a water to water heat pump in line with a buffer tank. In this case, if we're in heating mode, we can provide first stage heating through our radiant system. Our second stage of heating would be provided from the fan coil. And if we switch over to cooling mode, then our first stage of cooling would be through our fan coil. And here we have the option of doing radiant floor cooling. And in this webinar presentation, we'll explore how the 557 is perfectly positioned to accommodate designs that include radiant floor cooling. Now the 557 was designed for these heat pump applications, but I do want to emphasize that it is not limited to being just a heat pump thermostat. It is also perfectly suited for two-stage heat, two-stage cool applications with traditional heating and cooling equipment instead of heat pumps. And we'll look at those applications first over the next two slides. The first traditional application is a forced air system for heating and cooling through standard ductwork. The 557 is controlling one stage of furnace through the W2 relay connections, and an air conditioner is providing two stages of cooling through the DX coil with the Y1 and the Y2 relay connections. We're also controlling a fan with our G connection and humidification through an accessory relay. So this is a standalone one-stage heat two-stage cool application. 
In the past, you may have used a 546 for this application to get your two stages of cooling, but now you would use the 557. In fact, the 557 will replace all 544, 545, and 546 applications, with the exception of two-stage furnaces and two-stage fans. Our second non-heat pump application is another very common application where we're using a hydronic system for heating and an air conditioner for cooling. In heating mode, our first stage of heat is provided by the radiant floor. Our second stage of heat is operated with the fan coil through the W2 relay connection. When we're in cooling mode, our air conditioner can provide two stages of cooling with the Y1 and the Y2 relay connections. Again, we're also controlling the fan and humidification through the accessory relay. So this is a two-stage heat, two-stage cool application. Before we revisit the heat pump applications in greater detail, I do want to take a look at the four different types of heat pumps, because the type of heat pump you have will determine your control solution. The left-hand side of the slide shows two heat pumps that use air to distribute the energy to the building. We have an air-to-air -air heat pump, very dominant in the market, where air is being used as the energy source, and air is also being used to distribute that energy to the building. Below that, we have a water-to-air heat pump, where water is being used as the energy source. And this is typically obtained from tubing buried deep in the ground. Again, air is being used to distribute that energy to the building. On the other side of the slide, we show two heat pumps that use water to distribute the energy to the building. We have an air-to-water heat pump, where air is being used to gather that energy, and water is being used to distribute the energy to a hydronic system. Underneath that, we have the water-to-water -water heat pump, where we're using a geosource to obtain our energy, and we're using water to deliver that energy to the load in a hydronic system. Now, why does all of this matter? Well, it matters for two reasons. It matters for proper control selection and also to properly configure the settings in the 557. The 557 was designed to operate heat pumps that use air to distribute the energy to the building. Any application that's using water as a distribution medium requires that the 557 be paired with the 406 house control. And in this webinar presentation, we're going to see how the capabilities of the 557 really complement the functions of the 406 house control. Our first heat pump application is a very common application where we're using an air-to-air -air heat pump to provide forced air heating and cooling. We've also shown the option of adding the radiant system. And since it is optional, we've outlined it in a dashed red line. If we include the radiant, that is our first stage of heat. A second stage of heat would be provided by the heat pump. If it's a two-stage heat pump, we would get our third stage of heat from the heat pump as well, and that would be through the Y1 and the Y2 relay connections. If needed, we can bring on electric strip backup as a fourth stage of heat through the W2 relay connection. We've shown the fan operation with the G relay connection, and we're controlling humidification with an accessory relay connection. In cooling mode, our heat pump can provide up to two stages of cooling if it is a two-stage heat pump. So this is a four-stage heat, two-stage cool heat pump application. Our second heat pump application shows the building loop. So this is a closed water building loop. The loop is maintained within a certain temperature range, typically around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's done with a boiler and a cooling tower. In each unit of the building, we would find a water-to-air heat pump. And this type of configuration is perfect for commercial applications like office buildings, apartment buildings, and hotel applications. We've also shown, again, the option of the radiant floor. If this is included, the radiant floor is our first stage of heat. We can find a second and third stage of heat with our heat pump, 
and again a possible fourth stage of heat through the electric strip backup. In cooling mode, our heat pump can provide two stages of cooling if it is a two-stage heat pump. Since each unit is controlled independently, some of the units can be in heating mode while some can be in cooling mode, and each unit will absorb or release heat to the loop. Traditionally, this type of system was controlled with customized building automation systems, but we can accomplish the same thing by installing a 557 in each of the units, and we can connect all the 557s to a Tecmar Gateway 483 control so that we can have remote access over the internet. We can have a similar control solution at a significant reduction in cost with the 557. Our last heat pump application shows the water-to-water -water heat pump. Now since water is being used to distribute this energy to the building, we need to pair our 557 thermostat with the 406 house control. In heating mode, this buffer tank would be filled with hot water. Our first stage of heat would be the radiant floor. Our second stage of heat would be the fan coil controlled with the W2 relay connection. When we switch over to cool mode, and this tank is now filled with chilled water, our fan coil is going to provide a first stage of cooling. We have the option here of doing radiant floor cooling, which has been getting a lot of attention in our industry lately. And controls like the 557 and the 406 have advanced features to properly, successfully execute radiant floor cooling, as we will learn when we discuss the functions of the 557 in greater detail. Note there is no backup in this case. There is no electric strip backup. The backup in this case would be from a backup boiler or an electric element in the tank. And you can see those in the application of the 406 diagrams. These are the 10 key functions of the thermostat 557. Some of these may be familiar to you. You might recognize the term air group master and away scene key if you're familiar with the 552 thermostat. But there are definitely a lot of new functions here, including radiant floor warm weather shutdown, balance point schedule, relative humidity control, and radiant floor cooling. We're going to discuss each of these 10 key functions in the webinar and go over what they mean for the overall capability of the 557 thermostat. The first function we'll go over is the heat staging operation. I'm going to draw your attention to the bottom axis. On this side of the axis, it's represented in red for warm weather. And as we go along, the outdoor temperature is getting increasingly colder until we reach cold outdoor temperatures shown in blue. When we are above the warm weather shutdown, we have no need for heating, so we're not going to stage any of our heating equipment. As the outdoor temperature drops below the warm weather shutdown, we may bring on stage 1 and stage 2 of our heat pump. If the outdoor temperature continues to drop, we see a new setting called radiant floor warm weather shutdown. And we will discuss this in greater detail later in the webinar. What this setting does is it holds off the radiant slab until the outdoor temperature is sufficiently cold enough that we're confident we're not going to experience any heat cool switchover that's associated with the milder shoulder seasons. So it is now safe to bring on our radiant floor as first stage heat and our heat pump as a second and third stage of heat. If the outdoor temperature continues to drop, we see another new setting, the W2 lockout. And this is similar to radiant floor warm weather shutdown in that it holds off this backup heat. So we're going to prevent it from operating until the outdoor temperature is sufficiently cold that we may actually need a four stage of heat. We don't want it coming on before that and overwhelming our system unnecessarily, resulting in high electricity bills but now it is sufficiently cold, our radiant floor will be a first stage heat, our heat pump will be a second and third stage of heat, and the electric strip backup can provide a fourth stage of heat. 
if the outdoor temperature continues to drop, we see another new setting called the balance point. And this is particular to air source heat pumps only. We will go over this later in the webinar. But what this setting does is it prevents air source heat pumps from operating inefficiently. So when the outdoor temperature reaches a certain point, the air source heat pump does not provide any efficiency advantage. So we're not going to bring that on. We are going to instead enable our radiant floor as a first stage of heat and the electric strip backup as a second stage of heat. This heat staging operation ensures that the heat pump is used as much as possible while its operation is efficient, always maintaining absolute comfort for the homeowner. Our cool staging operation shows a similar chart to the one we just saw, except now we're starting off with cold outdoor temperatures and gradually getting warmer until we're at warm outdoor temperatures shown in red. When it's cold outside, we have no need for cooling equipment, so we're not going to stage any of it on. As the outdoor temperature rises above our cooling cold weather shutdown, we can now bring on stage one and stage two of our heat pump for cooling. If the outdoor temperature continues to increase beyond the warm weather shutdown, we can now bring on stage one and stage two of our heat pump. And if our system includes radiant floor cooling, now we can enable the radiant floor cooling as well. Balance point, as I mentioned earlier, is when an air source heat pump loses its efficiency advantage. Another way of saying this is its coefficient of performance approaches one. In other words, the energy it takes to operate our heat pump is the energy we're getting out of our heat pump. So there really is no use in using our heat pump beyond this balance point setting. If the outdoor temperature drops below that setting, the 557 will not bring on the heat pump, but will use the backup heat source instead. Now, balance point is not a fixed setting in the 557. It depends on the capacity of your heat pump, and it depends on your building envelope. So it's very particular to your system. Typically, though, it's in the range of 27 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So this balance point setting will prevent the inefficient operation of your air source heat pump. Balance point schedule is a new feature for Tecmar. As far as I know, the 557 is the only thermostat on the market that incorporates this function. Let's say it's cold outside, but we're still above our balance point threshold. So the heat pump is still operating with some efficiency advantage. And our utility company is offering reduced off-peak electrical rates. So in our diagram, we're showing those reduced rates from 9 p.m to 7 a.m. It may make financial sense for us to only run our heat pump during those off-peak times when we're getting a financial incentive to do so. And it might be cheaper for us to use a fossil fuel heat source during those peak hours when the electrical rates are higher. What the balance point schedule function allows us to do is to customize our system so that we can switch between heat sources depending on the financial incentive to do so. Radiant floor warm weather shutdown is another new setting for Tecmar, particular to the 557. To explain that this setting, let's look at the image we have on the slide, and let's assume this is a west-facing home. We can see there is a lot of window area here. There's actually two levels of floor-to-ceiling windows. So we can expect that this room is probably going to have a significant solar gain in the afternoon. In the shoulder seasons, though, the mornings are probably quite cool, while the afternoons are still warm. What we don't want to do is to charge up our radiant floors in the morning, only to have them continue to radiate heat in the afternoon when we don't need any extra heat. That may force us to turn on our cooling equipment when we otherwise may not have had to. So what this setting does is it allows us to hold off the radiant floor until the temperature is sufficiently cold. And it allows us to use our heat pump instead to answer any of our heating needs. 
And after all, this is when our heat pump is operating with a pretty high efficiency advantage. So let's use that while we can, while we're getting that efficiency bonus out of it, and hold off the radiant system until we actually need it when the outdoor temperature is colder. You may be familiar with the term air group master. If you are not, an air group master controls the forced air heating and cooling for a group of radiant floor heated zones. So we have shown here one zone that has the 557 thermostat controlling this equipment. And we have three other zones that all share the same ductwork. And each zone would operate its own radiant floor. The idea behind an air group master is to integrate the heating and cooling operations for zones that share the same ductwork. And we do that so we can avoid simultaneous heating and cooling. The 557 will average the temperatures from all the members of the air group to determine when to enable the equipment. When we're in cooling mode, the 557 will prevent all these thermostats from operating the radiant floor so we don't have simultaneous heating and cooling. And when we're in heating mode, the 557 does something which I find truly remarkable. It actually applies the radiant floor warm weather shutdown function to all the other thermostats in the air group. So you can have only one 557. The rest of your thermostats could be TN2 or TN4 stats without this feature, and yet they all benefit from this feature. It's just another example of our system approach that Tecmar is known for. One of the primary features of the 557 is its ability to measure and control humidity. And we can use this to create a comfortable living or working space by maintaining relative humidity minimum or maximum settings by enabling humidification or dehumidification equipment. For radiant cooling, relative humidity actually takes on great importance because we need to make sure we avoid any risk of condensation. So the 406 will use the relative humidity measurement provided by the 557 to calculate the dew point. And it will reset the water temperature to the floor to make sure we are always at least 2 degrees above the dew point so we never run the risk of having condensation. Radiant floor cooling will reduce the sensible cooling load. It is not intended to provide 100% of the cooling because it cannot remove, remove humidity, or as we call the latent heat load. It can only address the sensible cooling load. Now, numbers that are tossed around in the industry, a conservative estimate would be 5 to 10 BTU per square foot of cooling capacity. But if we're in an area like the one we've shown here, where there is a lot of window space, it's a room that's going to experience a lot of solar gain, our cooling capacity can actually reach 30 to 35 BTU per square feet. So radiant floor cooling is especially effective in areas where solar gain can be up to 80% of the load. And how it does that is it removes heat from the slab before it's able to heat up the room. So I like to think of it as a proactive approach to cooling instead of a reactive approach. Now since we're using water to distribute this energy, we need to pair the 557 with the 406 house control. If you are familiar with our 552 thermostat, you know our touchscreen interface. The 557 shares that same touchscreen interface that the 552 thermostat has. It is very intuitive. Adjustments are extremely easy to make. It literally is one touch access to temperatures, time, schedules, and fan control. I'm going to draw your attention to the going away scene key. You can touch the going away scene key to force your entire network to operate at reduced temperatures. And this can be configured for an away time ranging from 1 to 180 days. So it's perfect for short-term vacations, longer-term vacations, or even for snowbirds that winter elsewhere. If you incorrectly set the number of days that you're going to be away for, or you have to come home earlier than you expected, you can touch the cancel away button 
and the entire system will resume normal operation. Of course, you won't have this problem if you're connected to a gateway 483 because that gives you the option to cancel the away mode remotely the day before or even at the airport on your way back. The 557 has three auxiliary sensor connections, and they can be configured for any combination of sensors, including a floor sensor, room sensor, duct outdoor sensor, and even a humidity sensor. So as you know, the 557 does have a built-in humidity sensor, but if we want to take into account a humidity measurement in another area of the building, we can do so by connecting the external humidity and temperature sensor 086. Now the 557 will use both humidity measurements and average them. If we only want to take into account the external humidity measurement, then we can easily disable the built-in humidity sensor on the 557. We've also shown here a slab sensor connected to one of the auxiliary sensor terminals, and that would be important if we're doing radiant floor heating or cooling, and we want to control the floor minimum and maximum settings. The 557 can be configured to suit your display needs. So you can show an, a secondary temperature to be either an outdoor temperature, which probably most of us would want to see, or if you're more concerned with the humidity measurement, it can display that. It could display the floor temperature. Or if you want to always compare your actual temperature to the set points, we can display those on the home screen as well. So you can configure the display of the 557 to suit your particular needs and wants. Now, Tecmar has two lines of communicating controls. We have TechMarnet 2 and we have TechMarnet 4. And in the past, thermostats were either TN2 or TN4. What's great about the 557 is that it can be both. You can configure the 557 for a TechMarnet 2 system. So we're showing two wires connecting to a TN2 house control wiring center or zone manager. Or we can connect the 557 to a TN4 system control wiring center or zone manager. We can even use the TechMarnet 557 in standalone operation. There are no limitations here. It can be used for TN2, TN4, standalone. We can use it for new construction. We can use it for two wire retrofits. We can connect the thermostat to system controls. We can have a thermostat only network, or we can have a single standalone thermostat. The choice is yours. These are the heat pump connections, and we wanted to show you this slide to see how easy it is to install the 557, how easy the connections are to the heat pump. These are your standard heat pump connections, W2 for backup, Y1 and Y2 for your compressor stages, G for fan control, O for the reversing valve, which would be energized for cooling, and R and C for 24 volt power. To summarize, we covered those three heat pump applications that the 557 was designed for. We also covered two traditional heat cool equipment applications to reinforce that the 557 is not just a heat pump thermostat. We went over the 10 key functions of the 557, including the radiant floor warm weather shutdown, balance point schedule, and relative humidity measurement and control. We also went over the wiring connections. So we looked at the three auxiliary sensor input terminals. We looked at the TechMarnet connections. It can be TechMarnet 2, TechMarnet 4, or standalone. And we looked at how simple the connections are to the heat pump. In summary, the 557 is the only thermostat solution for heat pump heating and cooling with radiant floor control. It features relative humidity, measurement, and control, and all this with a simple, convenient touchscreen user interface.
I hope you found this webinar useful and informative. Keep in mind that additional information can be found on our website, www.techbarcontrols.com, where you can download data and application brochures for the 557 and all other Techmar products. We are confident that the 557 is the best choice, the only choice, for heat pump heating and cooling together with radiant floor control, and also for applications that don't involve heat pumps. Simply put, we offer the better design, the better control, for better systems. If you have any questions or feedback, I would love to hear them. You can email at the email address shown on the screen, learn at techmarkcontrols.com. We will get back to you as soon as possible, typically within the same day. If this presentation has whet your appetite and you're hungry for more, we will be releasing a more technical presentation on the 557 that will focus on the various setting configurations. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. It will be released in January. Thank you for joining me for this webinar presentation of the 557. I do appreciate your time. My name is Elizabeth Brown, and I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great rest of your day.